What is up guys, Evan Aldo here. Wanted to make a vlog today. I'm in Brickle Key right now, just watching kind of the uh, sun start to set here. See the nice buildings in, uh, in Brickle, in Miami. Um, I'm not on the side with all the yachts. Um, it was a little bit quieter on this uh, side to try to film. So anyway, what I want to talk to you guys a little bit right now is kind of leaving, leaving your comfort zone. And that can be tough, especially when you're trying to look for success, especially when you're trying to look for, you know, getting out of kind of the, the place you're in. I was watching um, a video of Bob Proctor. Um, if you guys don't know who he is, he died um, a year or two ago, and he was just a big kind of law of attraction teacher. And he had a lot of good points in some of his uh, YouTube videos. And one of them was, he said, like, when he would meet to, like, coach somebody, the first thing he would, one of the first things he would ask them is, like, how much have you ever earned in a year? Now, he didn't really care how much they actually earned in a year. That didn't really mean too much to him, but he wanted to get, you know, how much, the most you've ever earned in a year could kind of signify, kind of mentally put in, like, your subconscious, like, how much you're worth, how much you deserve, things of that nature, and that could kind of keep you stuck a bit. You know, say it's say it's $100,000, or say it's $50,000, or $40,000, you know, what have you. That's kind of, that, that could kind of program you to think, you know, you're at that level, this is the place you're at, you know, there's nothing else, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't kind of improve upon that. And once you kind of, as you climb that ladder, you get more used to these type of things. I know Steve Harvey said, um, you know, I know he said, you know, try flying first class just pay pay a little bit extra one not, not just a little bit extra let's be real probably double as much usually i think to fly first class and um experience that kind of experience that that's all law of attraction you know experience kind of you know what it's like to live the lifestyle you want or even see maybe maybe it's not the lifestyle you want i mean i know not too many people i know certain people will don't like that stuff they just like you know what they're used to and there, there's nothing wrong with that but i think ultimately you know, if you're somebody who's watching a vlog like this, I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably want to improve at least a little bit. You know, you're probably curious about, you know, improving and getting kind of uh, the things you desire, you know, the things you want. And, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with, you know, trying to, you know, move up. You know, I know Naval Ravikant said, you know, he was talking about kind of meditation and how that could be used as a tool. Um, I think that's an important thing if you want to lessen you know, your anxiety, number one, because when you're trying to leave to, to move up, you know, you, you, you may have anxiety, you're leaving your comfort zone. And there's, it's kind of how it is, you know, there's, there's a lot of risks, you know, a lot of risks that kind of come with that. Um, and ultimately, you may be a bit, you know, you may be a bit nervous at times, you know, you may be not, especially, you know, leaving your hometown, you know, leaving what you're used to, leaving a job to try to do something, pursue a, a different interest, starting a YouTube channel, you know, what will people think? Starting a podcast, what will people think? You know, all of these type of things. What will people think? And it's ultimately, you know, I think you know, you look at kind of the most successful people a lot of times. I'm not I'm not saying to do this. I'm definitely not saying to do this, but I look at a lot of successful people and the stuff they put on social media, the way they act a lot of times is kind of cringy and it's kind of like the average person would not be talking about some of the stuff they talk about would not be posting about some of the stuff they talk about and I think for for certain ones it's kind of like you know the thing you got to really keep in mind that's important too is a lot of people you know they they did they were really disciplined to make the money they were really disciplined to make the money to get to the place they got to and then they start you know acting all degenerate maybe and that's not what you should do that's that's a good ticket to mediocrity to get back down obviously if you're already worth hundreds of millions millions of dollars it's hard to put the toothpaste back in the the toothpaste bottle if you get what i'm saying at that point you know but you have your reputation you have other things that you know kind of come around with it so you always you know i feel like there, there's no utopia you know there's no utopia and part of that kind of kind of makes life fun i mean i don't think there's going to be a utopia and I think you know I think what was it Neil deGrasse Tyson said you know if we could live forever we would be never motivated to kind of get out of bed you know the fact that it's temporary the fact that you know there's going to be an end or a transition to something else um, hopefully something greater um, later on hopefully many years from now a long long time from now that's you know ultimately a thing of motivation that's ultimately a thing of motivation so you know ultimately you know you think about a lot of times too, like I was talking about in my last video, you have the, the subconscious and the conscience 
And a lot of times, you know, if you have a big success, if things go really, really good, and I've talked to a lot of people about this, you know, I, I talk to a lot of successful people and, you know, so a lot of them say to me, you know, it kind of feels surreal, especially people who didn't inherit, you know, all the money, especially people who did it on their own, you know, it kind of feels surreal to me in a lot of ways sometimes, you know, what I kind of, what I kind of accomplished here. And that's, that could actually, I think that's a little bit dangerous because, you know, you got to feel like you deserve the things you want. If it doesn't feel real to you, if it doesn't feel real, then it feels like that old life is, is the real life that you're going to be headed back towards. You know, you want to feel like you deserve it. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I think we're taught, a lot of us are kind of taught from a young age, you know, you don't deserve this, you don't deserve that, you don't deserve to, you know, keep, keep going um, towards the things you really want. And ultimately, you know, the more, it depends who you're talking to. I mean, I feel like at least nine out of 10 times, the advice you take from anyone, the vast majority of time, if not every time, the advice you take from anyone is gonna be essentially what they did. So think very hard, you know, if you're gonna take advice or take, or even talk, you know, even, cause you're, you know, I think Bob Proctor said more and multiple to, to multiple times, he said, you know, at, when I was broke, I was hanging out with everybody who didn't make you know, much money. He was making four grand a year, which is in today's money, $40,000 a year. Everybody else he hung around with wasn't making much. That's around what they were making. But then, you know, as I, I started hanging around with better people, more successful people, as, as I kept going up, as I kept improving. And that's an important thing too. And, you know, it ultimately, it may be tough because you may have, you know, I was watching another video by the channel Improvement Pill, which is a pretty, there's some of those animated like self-improvement channels on YouTube are pretty good. I've watched that one kind of, quite a few of those videos over the years that kind of pop up. And one of them, you was saying like the number one thing that, that shows kind of happiness is people, um, is kind of companionship, your friends, you know, your community. A lot of people, they may be close to their families and all that, and that, that's good, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but it really depends, you know. The thing here is like, if you want to get out of mediocrity, if you come from a middle class kind of background, a very average or below average background, you may have to move out of that for at least a little bit, at least temporarily. And a lot of people talk about, a lot of people talk about how they may be motivated to make money to potentially like help their families, help their parents. And you could view that as maybe, you know, branching out of that for a little bit. You could view that as something that, that could kind of, you know, help them later on, kind of that, that sacrifice to kind of help them to ultimately help them later on, which could be, which could be really, really good in the, in the long, you know, the long stretch of things. I've, I've never really thought about that too, too much. And another goal too, that another, well, yeah. And another thing too, that starting to rain or something, <laughs> was that hail? <laughs> Jeez. Um, another thing too, that I thought about is, you know, when you have children, your goal is to kind of create a better, a better version of yourself when you have, when you have children. So that could be another kind of important thing to think about, you know, uh, create a better, you know, create a better version of yourself. And that's ultimately, I think the goal, if you're, whether your parents know it or whether you know it or not, that's, I, I think that's ultimately always what's kind of been the goal because we don't want to stay where we are. We want to create something better ultimately um, as time goes on. You know, theoretically, you know, <laughs> there's blips in it, but things, things tend to kind of, you know, get better. And a lot of people talk about, you know, mentorship. A lot of people talk about those type of things. You know, that could be something that kind of uh, may make you leave your comfort zone. I know I was listening to a few years ago. Um, I haven't listened to him too much lately. I know Sam Harris said in one podcast a few years ago, this is probably like four years ago now I listened to this. And he said, people don't tell you this, but the quote was, people don't tell you this, but the people that you make friends with early in life tend to stay with you and that's not it's not always but it just tends to be you tend to you make friends with these people and then it's, you stay at the same level that kind of comfort zone and it's going to be you know it's going to be to really leave that it's going to be at least a little bit un uncomfortable i mean even if you're at a place where you make you know say you're making you know 200 300 grand a year you know you had some success but it's not it's not real big or maybe even 500 grand a year you know you've had pretty good success i mean that's that's really good you should be proud obviously but to move up, to even move up off of those levels, or even if you made a million dollars in a year, to even move up off of those levels, you may have to leave your comfort zone a bit more. I know Alex Becker had a pretty good video talking about this. It was, I forget the exact title, but it was you know basically how he went to zero. It was called in the title, how he went to zero for to like 200 million. And he was talking about the different kind of um, levels of it. Like he started out you know, at 100 grand or 200 grand. Usually, so if you, if you look, like there's exceptions to every rule, but if you look at like, 
typically, you know, to make 100, 200 grand a year, like that six figure salary where you could basically, you know, with that type of money, live almost wherever you want. Um, yeah, you, you would be able to definitely live live wherever you want. You know, you have that decent amount of freedom, but you're kind of a wage slave. You know, you have to work for, you're working for hours. You know, you don't have any leverage at that point. That's the big, you know, kind of thing there. You don't have any leverage. And from that point, you get you start to get some leverage, maybe hire people, then move up. And then you could get up to the 500 to a million dollar area. Then past that, I forget, I forget the, what's funny is I forget what the next part is. I think it was it was like buying lead generation, you know, so and it was investing. That could be a big thing too, because if you have a business, this is a big thing that I think a lot, I've seen this, I've seen this over the years, a lot of people, I'm not even saying this was like the, the bad, they made the bad decision, like who knows, but a lot of people, they started making a pretty good salary. They started, they had a business, but they were afraid to maybe reinvest in the business. They were afraid to maybe hire more employees. They were afraid to, get lead, you know, invest in other things because that costed money. So they were afraid because, you know, and it's tough. I mean, I'm not even saying that's, you know, that's, they made the, the bad decision or the worst decision, but that's, and then their businesses maybe died out a little bit because of that, because then you have, you have competition who's willing to spend more money than you. I think um, Alex Becker said, once you get up to the 500K to a million dollars a year, I think it was the million dollars a year. That's where it kind of like everybody sees, you know, this guy's making a million dollars a year. How could we, let's invest more, let's put more resources to it, let's work more hours, let's do more things than he's doing and try to beat him out. And a lot of times that happens. And usually, you know, these people that, you know, kind of plateaued to a bit, like it wasn't bad what happened to them, but I think they got kind of complacent. I think I saw in a lot of them, maybe like their relationships kind of dwindled at that point. They just didn't have the emphasis, you know, the, the enthusiasm and the risk-takingness and the, the fortitude that they had when they first got to where they were so far with the business or something of that nature. So I think I think that's a very, like you always gotta be trying to like improve, always trying to leave your comfort zone. And it, it could, like I'm not even, I can't, like that's the thing too, like I can't even tell you that that's always gonna be the right thing to do because you know, it, it's easy for somebody on the internet to just tell you, you know, leave your comfort zone, take these risks, do all these things, but they don't really have too much accountability, the person telling you that, you know what I mean? Like it, it's kind of like, there, there are bad things that could happen, you know, you could lose everything theoretically. <laughs> But I mean, at the same time, to motivate you, I mean, you could you could lose everything you know, tomorrow. Yeah, you know, anything could happen. That's a, like the book of Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. You know, you, that's more about that book is more about just investing or trading. That book is about life. I mean, anything can happen. Anything could happen. I mean, who? It's very very hard. We can make educated guesses on the future, but it's very nobody really is able to you know predict the future with a good record. And I mean, what happens a lot if you saw somebody like Michael Burry, the one that predicted you know made a fortune shorting the housing market in 08, has have his predictions since then been been very good i haven't looked at them very very closely closely but for the most part they've been pretty bad you know what i mean it, what seems to happen is like you have like one person who bets a lot on one thing that they're confident about and they they get it maybe there's a 70 80 percent chance that, of winning and they're really sure and they they kind of get it you know they maybe they get a little lucky or whatever and they make their money they make their fortune and then after that you know it's kind of like shows that you know they're smart obviously but nobody's nobody's right all the time you know nobody's nobody's right all the time i mean there's there's something there they're they're smart people i mean my, michael bear is a very smart guy i think but nobody really knows that's a tough thing i mean you, you put the greatest minds in the world together and nobody nobody exactly is going to be able to tell you what's going to happen and you know maybe that's a good thing maybe that's because it shows you know kind of the kind of the um you know the unpredictability the unpredictability of life in a lot of ways like it's just really really un unpredictable in some ways. And I think though, what we want to get onto is kind of, you know, the control of our thoughts. And, you know, as life goes on more and more, there's just so many more kind of distractions, you know, you got YouTube shorts, you got so many things, you know, at your fingertips, so much cheap dopamine that people talk, talk about. And, you know, it, it keeps going because like, if you look at probably the 19, when did, when did like refrigerators first? Because that was the early 19, Hundreds. I mean, before then, you need to have refrigerators. It's probably even tougher, tougher to get your food. You know, so there's there's different levels of it. I don't think it's, yeah. You know, I don't think we're all doomed. I don't think it's all bad. But you got to kind of look at that. And ultimately, you know, I think an important thing too is like to motivate you guys because a lot of times, you know, you'll look at content, you'll look at all this stuff, you look at your competition. You know, not even being a YouTuber, not even being a podcaster, like just starting a business because the majority of CEOs, the majority of rich people, I think Alex Becker's posted about this, are, are not on Twitter. You know, they're not, 
they're not even that like well known. Like you're not going to recognize them. Why you could you know you could be right next to a multi multi millionaire, a billionaire even, and you may not you may have no idea. Well, maybe a billionaire they're more known, but you may have no idea who they are. Like they're not all famous people who are posted on Twitter. A lot of them are rich and anonymous rather than you know rich and famous. And that, that's a big thing too, because it, it just looks like there's always, you know, that type of, you know, that type of kind of, um, what is it? Oh yeah, that type of competition, it looks really steep. But to motivate you, I think I've said this before, you know, a lot of people quit, a lot of people, um, they don't, you know, they don't keep going, they'll quit at something, they'll retire, and there that's your possibility to kind of get there. And then what happens a lot, like I mentioned earlier, that person starts making the money, 500K a mil a year, maybe even more, and then they kind of get happy with it, they get complacent with it, and then, you know, that's they just want to chill, and that, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. And then there's your um, kind of, you know, if you have the fortitude, if you have the work ethic, there's your place to compete. And I don't even think, you know, ultimately, the thing too is when you're really people talk about you know flow state that's a big thing a lot of people have talked about hamza that youtubers talked about that a lot you know when you're doing things that you really like you're kind of in flow state and people that's really important too because people doing things that they really really like they seem there's a theory on this this is pseudoscience this may may make them be complete nonsense they don't they don't age they don't seem to age but on the, the con, you know, on the other side of that, maybe they just have better genetics. <laughs> but they don't seem to age. Usually in a flow state, that's a theory, you don't age. So that's, a, that's, a, that's like a very, very, very remarkable kind of goal. Like get into flow, like do the things you really want to do, get in a flow state where you're just really, really focused on it and you, you, know, you won't age, you, know, you ultimately won't age. And it could be, yeah, I'm not even gonna say, there's just so many different avenues you could go down in, in this day and age, I mean, even maybe just making this video for you know 15 16 minutes now that could be you know kind of the thing towards towards kind of flow state but you know i think ultimately visualization is is very you know, very important i think so many big people i know jim carrey you know he wrote that check to himself i talked about that but he also would go to like really well a lot of these people they would go to wealthy areas and they would pretend kind of like they already had that success and they would visualize that and that kind of helped them and I think Bob Proctor said it, ever, anybody could say, oh, that's so simple, anybody could do it, but nobody really does these things. You know, nobody, it's so simple. I could just write down my goals, I could do this. You know, it's so simple, how could it work? But not that many people really do that. Not that many people are really, you know, kind of thinking about, you know, the big thing, the big things there. They're just stuck in the old, the old kind of thoughts. And it can take some time to get out of it. Dr. Joe Dispenza says, you know, when you're creating a new identity, a new self, you know, it's gonna be uncomfortable in the beginning, like anything else. Think about like lifting weights. I remember when I first started like doing leg workouts and stuff, lifting weights and all that, like it was really uncomfortable. And then it kind of got easier over time as I got used to it. The same thing with running, with cardio. You know, it's kind of like that. You get, you kind of get used to it over time. It takes some time, but you get used to it over time and ultimately it kind of, kind of gets easier. Um, and I think that the thing too, you know, if you're a lot of people, it's tough to make a decision. Sometimes you don't know, you know, what decision to make. I, I'm still kind of struggling with some things too, because there's been tough decisions that I've thought about that are, are tough to make. And, you know, I know Naval Ravikant posted on Twitter one time, you know, if you can't decide, the answer is no. So that if you really, I think I would interpret that to mean like if you, if you want to do, try this new venture or something and you're really hesitant and it, you can't decide, the answer you probably should hold off or probably try something that you're more passionate about. The things that you really should try should be re 